Now, good evening. Um, Anna, how are you keeping? I'm very well, thanks, Sally. It was a lovely day. I really enjoyed having a bit ah, of sunshine. Beautiful, beautiful, even from the get-go. But it, it was, there was a nice bit of frost there tonight, or, um, this morning, when when I got up, that was around um, half six, and the van was covered over, like I was going out right. to recycle. And, um, the van was covered over, so, you know what I mean? There's always be gardener, beware of the, the, yeah. the frosty nights, like they can be... Um, it can be, you know, detrimental to any plants there. So, so guys, a um, few people tuning in there. You're very welcome to another evening of the gardening um, show. I hope you're all keeping really well out there. And again, look at, send us in a comment where you're from. Let us know that you're watching. Give us a thumbs up and um, let us know what you're maybe doing in the garden. And if you have any questions, we're going to be talking tonight a lot about flowers, flower arrangements and growing flowers and growing flowers from seeds and what's best to be planting at the moment. And um, so without further ado, I'm absolutely delighted to have Anna Brown with us tonight. You know, I do follow her there on different social medias and um, just absolutely amazing what she can do. So I'll let Anna, you introduce yourself there and um, just give it a bit maybe about your background and you know, I suppose your passion for gardening because I can see that in everything you do, like you have a lovely passion and you have a lovely I find you have a lovely way about gardening that it's a little bit quirkier than your standard gardener, I suppose. If that's okay. right. Well, thank, thank you. I, I, yes, I think quirky is probably a good word. Eccentric, I've been called in the past as well. Um, don't think it's a, I think it's a compliment. Um, so I've been growing from seeds since I was a teenager growing up here in Mullingar. Um, there wasn't much to do when I was growing up um, with no television. And I used to read seed catalogs for fun. So um, seeds were cheap and you could have loads and loads of plants for the seeds. So it was a good thing for a teenager to do. Um, kept yeah. me it kept me busy, I suppose. And even though I've had a parallel career in IT, I went into computer science in college. I've always had my hands dirty. I've always had that kind of part of um, my life was important to me. I lived in California for a good few years. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, I had, you know, I grew tomatoes. I grew all the things that were very easy to grow. I tried to grow spuds, didn't grow too well in California, but tomatoes, Courgettes grow wonderfully there. So um, I focused on things that were, were, were suitable. Um, and came back then to Ireland in the, the 90s. Um, worked, lived in Dublin for a good while, had a, had a garden there. I had a blog when blogs were kind of a new thing um, about growing your own food in a small garden. Right. Um, now in Mullingar, I've been Mullingar for a good while and we have a, you know, a good sized suburban garden, which we had a lawn which was driving us and you know was cr driving us crazy we didn't we didn't enjoy mowing it there was what was the point the boys played football around the corner so um we basically have no lawn it's all flowers um there's a big polytunnel there's a chicken run and uh we've even gone out to the part of the grass between the footpath and the road called the hell strip and that's planted up as well so we, we don't have a lawn more anymore there's no point having one um and the flowers kind of, I do, I grew things I ate for a long time. And then, you know, I recognized there was, the beauty was, was an important part as well. So I started growing flowers to sell about two years ago and uh, was selling them kind of to subscription model. Um, they, they were left off to, um, to handmade design on Mount Street in Mullingar and people would collect them from there. And then last, last spring, right before COVID hit, or last, I suppose, winter, I um, got laid off from my IT job. So at that point I said, okay, this is it. I'm going to try and make a go of it, growing flowers the whole time. Um, so here we are. Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent stuff, full of us. That's really, really um, amazing. Yeah, that's, 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 again, I, you know, it's, I suppose it's something you had from a, a young age. So, you know what I mean? It was, it was second nature to you as such anyways, you know, and um, there is nothing like it. But as you say, I think that's a brilliant thing, you know, to get rid of the lawn and grow you know, more of what you like and just making better yeah. use of the space and get more colouring than just that. And it's, it's like sometimes I know mowing the lawn and I'm, I'm doing my arc out the back now because I'm a patch in the lawn. I just hate going down mowing it. And I said, this year I'm not mowing. I'm just going to let nature take over. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm going to plant in a few a few native little things into it. And um, so that, that's my plan there. So uh, again, I just want to wish everyone out there a very, very happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, what else would you be doing? And I'm sure there was probably more potatoes planted in Ireland today than there was uh, yes. ever in the history of potato planting. <laughs> well, post famine, anyhow, right, let's uh, say. Post famine, absolutely, and absolutely, and hope there's a better crop, as they say. So, um, so tell me, what are you doing out the garden then at the moment? Like, what are you flower wise? What are we planting at the moment? 
So at the moment, I'm doing a lot of preparation. I, I would do a no dig method. So any parts that have gotten a bit weedy or whatever, I'd be taking out any perennial weeds, laying down some cardboard and putting some compost on top of that. So um, I have some um, annuals that were planted in September and they're going in the ground now. So they would have overwintered in pots or in the tunnel and they're going in. So I'd have, you know, I'd have cornflowers, I'd have some um, orlea, I'd have a few other things like that, maybe some loop and stuff like that. But there's, there's not, you know, things have either overwintered in the ground or they're, I'm planting seeds now. So the seeds that we're planting would be um, lots of annuals, things like cornflowers again, ami. Um, let's see, what else am I doing? There's a bit of achillea going in. Uh, sure, I have packs and packs of seeds. A lot of sweet peas would be going in. Calendula is a great one. Nigella is gorgeous, needs to be succession planted. And then I'm picking as well at the moment. So I, I'm picking a few yeah. flowers. I have a tunnel. And this is an example of what we come out of my garden. Wow. Was, um, an Icelandic poppy here. There's some lovely daffodils, narcissus. There's anemones and there's a hellebore here somewhere. So um, things are starting to, to pick up. There's a few flowers coming, which is really exciting. Um, and looking forward to start to make bouquets for the market and stuff. So that's that's very exciting. Um, something it'll be a few weeks yet before I pro production, but it is nice to bring a few flowers inside and just enjoy um, the beauty um, in, in the house. Absolutely, absolutely. And do you compost then when you have the no dig, like do you use a lot of oh, yeah. like, uh, green manures yeah. and, and emulsion and stuff like that? So you're. So green manures like, not so much. Um, but yeah. certainly, I mean, all our waste, include, and our neighbors actually, um, because we have no grass, we struggle yeah. to find the green to balance the brown. So we have neighbors who um, haven't sprayed anything on their lawn, so they bring their grass to us. And you know yes. that heat the compost the compost bins well. So yes. you know it's a service we provide for our, our community. Yes. But, you know it works for us as well. So I've got three big pallet composters. I have a couple of commercial ones of tumbler. I have wormeries. Um, you know so but you can never have you can mm. never have enough compost bins. You can never have enough yes. compost. So um, sure. yeah, I can see you nodding there. You I, probably feel you feel me. I, I know what's going on. I've I've got I've because um, I've actually just thinking I'm going to go and. Um, leave a bin at the neighbor's house because i have a, a wormery there and i collect the, the worm um tea or the, the liquid and that out the bottom yeah. and then i've the two pallet ones now are set up and i had a different section then for the grass cuttings and and what i do again what i, I do with the, the grass cuttings this year and i was actually sort of planning on making it up today on top of one of the pallets i'm going to get some fine mesh i'm going to put it across and i'm going to put my grass cuttings on top of that and let it brown brown up a little bit as well and that's going to be sort of my brown going in with the green of other stuff as well because when the grass starts to die out and start going brown you know that that's not your your green anymore going into your composter and it'll break down that bit quicker as well so i'm just gonna let it dry down a bit and then put it in as well into the composter because you know if you start layering with lots of um grass cuttings it, it just mats all together so I'm just trying to yeah get the balance <laughs> So the actually Bell Lane Coffee in Mullingar have been giving me sacks of um, what comes off the coffee beans when they roast them. It's it's a very dry material, a good brown material, lovely and, and soft. You could nearly use yeah. it for a mulch that's inclined to blow away. So that'll be going to the compost bin along with the grass to kind of give the good balance there. Um, mm. You know, that's another great yeah. thing is finding people, you know, people in town also have coffee grounds. Some of the cafes give away coffee grounds. So yeah. just know, I suppose, that if you go and you kind of you mooch around and you ask people and, you know, they actually have material that's ideal for composting and they're happy to, you know, they're happy to get rid of it. They're delighted. They're not putting it into landfill um, and, you know, it benefits other people to take it home and, and use it for their, their compost bins. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it should, it, should be, it should be something that's embraced in the town itself. Like I think the county council should nearly have a place where you can, like I know California, they, they compost so much, every bit of their waste is composted. And you actually get fined if you're putting out too much weight in, in, in your black weed bin or if it's not the right content in, in your back, but they'll actually fine you. So if your compost bin is not out, so it, it's, a, it's a brilliant system, but they, they, they generate so much of it. Um, of their own compost. So it's definitely, I think, an area they should be tapped into. Well, it would so be lovely to buy, yeah. sorry, just to put in that, it'd be lovely to be able to buy compost that came from the town waste to then use in your garden. I mean, there's, there's a, you yeah. know, there's the revenue stream there as well for, I think that's yeah. what we probably they're doing in California is that they actually then yeah. sell it back to people. And that would, you know, would be much better than peat compost um, if, if they can get the quality good. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, that's it, exactly, exactly, yeah, for sure. So I was going to ask you actually um, about, neighborhood um 
the neighbor food, sorry, neighbor food. Yes. yes. What exactly is this about? What so is it? It's 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 a countrywide scheme. Um, it's a piece of software, basically. At, at you know, the, the, basically. So some some guys in Cork made this software a couple of years ago, and it's been knocking around. But it had a real, real kind of boost. Um, COVID, I should give it a real boost. So it's it's a piece of software that allows you to set up a market. So we have a market in Mullingar and one in Ballymahan. Um, the market goes live on a let's say it goes live on a Thursday. Um, so people can shop then, you know, you go online, you shop, like you would shop in Tesco or whatever, you've got a huge range of beautiful local produce. You can shop for those, put in your basket, pay for it, and then the market closes, the online market closes on a, a Tuesday evening, Monday evening for Mullingar. Right. So then the producers on Tuesday morning then will get an email to say, you know, all these things have been ordered, um, bring them to Mullingar on Wednesday at three o'clock. So it means there's no waste. So if you're somebody who's a baker and you go to a farmer's market normally, you bake your loaves of bread, you hope people will buy them. You might run out of something and you wish you'd bake more of that, or you may have too much. Like if you go to a you know a market with ice cream and it's a cold day, you're gonna go home with all your ice cream. And that, that may actually be, have to be thrown out. With the neighbor food, you bake just what you're needed. So you know what you're getting. So for the flowers, which I sell there, I pick what's been ordered. I make the bouquets that have been ordered. I'm not making lots of bouquets on spec. Um, yeah. So then on the market day, Producers come and they bring all their produce um, and they have it labeled reasonably well, so I know who's going to. Um, and then they're done. So they, they come in one at a time, so it's very safe, very COVID friendly. Then the, the customers come um, and they tell me their number and they have the information of what their number is from the software. They've gotten an email to say, come at this time and pick up your order number 15. I have everything for 15 in one place. I take the stuff out of the fridges then for the, you know, the cheeses and the milk. And they're in and out in five minutes. And they go oh. home with their arms full of beautiful, delicious produce. Um, and, you know, that was a very safe way to get it. So really, it's it's a wonderful way for local people to access really good quality food and help local producers, you know, earn a living. Um, yeah, 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 absolutely. And of course, if you have, because, you know, sometimes you can grow an abundance of, of food. And, you know what I mean? Again, I, th I think that's brilliant because... I, and I was given a presentation last night on gardening and the benefits and, and one of the slides that was using was that you know let it be you know organic you know we're in the shops and we're looking at a label and we're saying oh it is an organic product you know and, and there's an organic you know there's organic shops in Mullingar selling organic, organic veg which is brilliant but is it local you yeah. know what I mean and, you know just because it's grown organically in wherever the middle east Peru, or, yeah oh absolutely and it's coming in and it's got lots of beer miles on it and it's it's you know how how it lasts that journey is beyond me but you know i have it I, I i do believe it's probably grown organically but what happens if after the harvest may not be 100 percent organic because you know you know yourself you pick flowers or you pick you know a head of lettuce or broccoli or something you bring it up to your house it ain't going to last for a week like yeah, you know, yeah. Although, it's mind you, well the stuff we're getting in the market, people are always commenting about how well it lasts because it's it's picked and it's it's in people's houses in their fridges the same day. So you're yeah, not you know, it, hasn't, it hasn't got tired from a long journey. It's it's fairly it's fairly yeah. refreshed when it comes to your fridge. So there's a real sense of health and strength in what people are buying. Um, no, but it's, well that, yeah. it's very nice to be help. You know, we, we I suppose we've gotten more of a local focus now with COVID, and it's important to to support local people. Um, and, and local jobs. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So I was going to show actually just to break it up, and we'll we'll put some because you have some lovely photographs you sent in to me there, and I was actually going to share them in, and then we can let people know what you're doing in the garden, and, and maybe let's explain a few of them because I was absolutely uh, they're beautiful colours. So um, I hope you can all see that there. And um, so, what's happening here in your garden, Anna? So yes, yeah, so um, this is actually looking. If you there's there's sweet William in the front, there's a pile of chives there, and there's some poppies, some perennial poppies. But what you can see that's quite interesting in this is actually those chives are growing along the side of a rain garden. So I have a big hole, big kind of a long hole, um, and a big hill the other side of it where um, I have a sort of a slope coming down the garden, and to prevent that water from running and taking soil with it and running out the drains i've i've created this this rain garden so it's a habitat it's a way to um reduce the amount of runoff and it's also um a great way to keep your garden well moisturized in the summer now we haven't had too many summers where we've had no rain but we had one a couple of years ago and that part of the garden was still flourishing because it had held on to the water 
Um, so yeah, so it's, I mean, so I, when I'm gardening, I'm thinking about more than just the flowers. I'm thinking about all the things that would live in my garden, all the creatures that you know want to that that can be sustained by 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 what I'm doing. And as well as that, I mean, just even looking at that, if you look at that versus a patch of lawn, the amount of a habitat it's providing and the amount of um, biodiversity that's there is huge. So you know, a big part of of what I preach is that you know you really want to get away from the lawns and. Uh, have some more divide diversity. And it's not that much more work, but it's a lot more pleasurable. Yeah. So those sweet williams are amazingly scented. Um, in a bouquet, yeah. they, they, yeah. they give huge fragrance, which you don't necessarily get from imported flowers. Um, the Dutch flowers, like the Dutch grow great roses in big tunnels, but they have no scent. Um, so, you know, a big part of the local, of the, the, the locally grown flowers is they're very highly scented. Um, and that people really, it reminds them, it brings them back in their memory. Um, to their grandmother's house or to you know to times past so it's a lovely a lovely sensual experience for all the senses absolutely and i think even to go out and i'm sure like if you went out there today or even when that's in full bloom and you can hear all the bees and you can hear the hover fly you can hear so much life but is there much water then in your in in the little pool you have then like would yeah. it, would it be get like would it be a foot of water like is it a, a pond as well as such or is it just so I, I do have a pond where I have put a liner in and you know that's there the whole time. This one drains away. So, you know, two days ago we had a lot of rain, it was totally full, it was kind of, you know, to the top. Over the last two days it's drained, so it's gone down about halfway now. Um and wouldn't be able to tell you how many gallons it has, and certainly wouldn't be something I'd be able to use to water things, but it, it you know, it does hold the water and it kind of keeps the water back from going down the drain, so you have it in, yeah. in the soil. It also helps drain the rest of the gardens. The rest of the garden, while this part is quite wet, the other part, you know, it's not so wet. Absolutely, but that's why actually I just see actually, you know what you can see in the picture there. I'm looking at a big screen here. You can actually see a bumblebee on one of the the flowers there, just on the the right hand yeah. side as well. So it's it's plenty of them now coming. They, they yeah. love the chives. That they absolutely adore the chives. And yeah. having that water there is really good for you know animals to drink. So it's it's an important part of of the 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 the, the, the ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I I think that's a brilliant idea, and um, so I definitely it's something because I say I'm, I'm doing a bit changes here myself, and it's definitely something I, I'm definitely going to consider now, and I, I know exactly where I'm going to put it when I do it. So uh, thanks so much for that. Cause they got it's all learning every, every day. The little learning um, for everyone, isn't it? You know, you're always picking absolutely, up yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you're telling me that's the flower range material you had done in a church. Yes. There. So this was with another another flower farmer. Um, so I'm a member of the Flower Farmers of Ireland and we would collaborate on various things. So one of our members had had a gig where she was doing a Bloomsday um, arrangement in, in a church for, in, in, you know, in honor of James Joyce on, on the right on the 15th of June, I think is when it is. So I provided some artichokes for her and this is the artichoke. So the kind of flowers I grow um, would be a little bit mad looking and certainly the artichokes would fall into that category or maybe cardoons you might call them um, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of height to them um, they're they're slightly crazy and then when they bloom they have this amazing purple bloom but they weren't in bloom at this point so this is just an example of the kind of you know of arrangements that are possible with the kind of flowers that you can grow in just a suburban garden in, in Mullingar it doesn't have to be anything exotic yeah absolutely and as I was saying to you look at it because when I've seen that picture coming in I got you know there's you'd actually stand and look at it, you know, it's not your standard, you know, flower range of you say, oh, that's globally, you know, you'll actually look and say, oh, I wonder what that is now, and what's that, and I'm sure the beautiful scent off it as well. That one maybe not so much, because what's in oh. with that is um, a bit of amaranth, so it probably wasn't very highly scented, but it did, it did right. have a huge visual impact. Um, yeah, yeah. It's really, really nice. All right, so this is, your, yeah, this is the, the food market, neighbor food that we were yes. talking about, so again, I just run that in case anyone missed it, Jeff. So again, you have your thought. It's something I'm definitely going to be interested in because again, you know, it's it's so important to be supporting local. And I think you know we've all learned. You know, I think I think over the last year, people have come more appreciated of what's on their door and are more willing to go out there and support. Like I suppose we see it in our own business there. You know, people are phoning and say, "I used to buy on X website from UK," or you know, an indoor plant enthusiast who were buying in. A product from Singapore, and now they're ringing me up and say, "Yeah, your product equally is good. It's it's perfect, and we're getting great results with it. And we're we're happy to be, you know, supporting Irish and, um, you know. So now they're actually people are, are actually out there looking. At. I think the the more of these little markets, the better, the better, you know, for sure. Yeah, 
I mean, you know, there's 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 no central processing place for this. The producers bring the stuff directly to the market. Yeah. But what's good for them as well is while they have their list of what they need to bring on the market day, they also don't spend a lot of time. So, you know, you can spend a whole day at a farmer's market and sell nothing. Um, yes. depending on who shows up or what you know what the mood is or whatever. This way it's there's no wasted journey. So if you sell nothing, you don't come in. If you sell lots, you bring it in and you're happy and you know how much you know you're, you're gonna get from it. So mm -hmm. there's lots of benefits. And you know, we have really amazing food. We have, you know, um, my, my brother is an organic beef farmer, so I'm proud to say we have his beef, um, Lakul organic. Um oh, and we, really? Yeah, and we so um we also have um a woman who lives out Lynn area who does both pork and lamb. So her, hers is Rathcam Farm, great, great meat as well. Um, bread, so the sourdough bread from coming from Magico and Moat, but there's also people making soda bread, lovely scones, all that kind of stuff. So the traditional stuff is happening. There's so many different kinds of jam and chutneys, like you'd be gone mad trying to figure out what to have for your dinner. Um, great cheeses. We have we have um, apple juice coming from Offaly, which, which is really delicious. Wow. And then yeah. lots Cordials coming from Cavan. So there's very interesting, you know, the kind of traditional cordials like elderflower and uh, no, gourds, no. nettle cordial. So, you know, you're, you're supposed to eat nettle this time of the year. Um, That's right. Full of yeah. vitamins. But, you know, they don't taste as good as the nettle cordial. So you can get all the benefits of the nettles, but, you know, in a nice fizzy drink that you add, you know, add some sparkling water to the cordial and it's lovely. Um, yeah, and yeah. So there's you know there's any amount of beverages and and then the, you know I, I would sell flowers and plants at the market as well. So the plants I sell they're all one thing somebody you know we were talking about an infestation of some kind of um, Australian or New Zealand a flatworm. So if if you're buying plants from me you know you're, you're not going to import anything nasty because they're coming just directly from Mullingar. So unless I have an infestation which I don't have I believe you know you're, you're going to get um, just the compost and the dirt and the plants. Um, yeah. You know that are coming from Ireland. So there's, you know, even just thinking about, you know, there's, there's no flying happening. They're, they're not, you know, they're, they're not coming. If you know, seeds are a very efficient way to move genetic material around, and then planting the seeds is, you know, locally is yeah. a very good way to do it. Um, it is. No, brilliant stuff. You yeah, know, I think, I think, yeah, the more local, the better. So then, that's another little flower arrangement, a bouquet. I don't know. Yeah. So that's a very simple bouquet. There's lots of fever few in there. There's Delcus carota. There's calendula. There's a few anemones some sweet william and you probably can imagine that that smells really good um people always tell me how long the bouquets last because they're picked the same day as they're sold practically um they're going to last you know a week and a half maybe even two weeks probably like that's not great for my business because things do last a long time but um you know i'm happy that i'm giving people a really quality product that they can really enjoy and also feel very safe about sniffing you know when you buy when you buy um flowers that have come from a long way away like kenya they've been stripped with all kinds of chemicals and pesticides. So when you actually put your nose in and smell that, you're probably inhaling a lot of poison. With one of these bouquets, you know there's there's no poison. You know, you're just inhaling, you might inhale a bee by accident, but that's probably the worst thing that you could possibly inhale. Um, everything else is is just pure nature. Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. And then, you know, you're, you're not, again, if you're buying them flowers from coming in from wherever and, you know, they're them sprayed on, then maybe you're throwing them into your compost or something like that. So it's not oh, good yes. thing to your house anyway. So. This is all totally compostable as well. So even when I wrap them, I would never wrap them in plastic. They're wrapped in either newspaper or some recycled Hessian bags. Um, just to make sure that everything that goes into them, apart from the rubber band, is is totally biodegradable. Yeah, uh, that's the, the, the perfect way to do it, yeah. So actually, yeah, that's uh, something I was very interested in is um, your your gardening courses as well that you do. Yeah, so I suppose, um, you know, in, in, in my IT world, um, I got a master's in e-learning a couple of years ago, which turned out to be quite a useful thing at the moment for COVID. So um, January, February, March, you're not that hugely busy for gardeners. Um, so I started doing these courses, these online courses. So they've been really popular. People seem to be very happy. And I make sure that there's a good mixture of... Um, there's been a bit of me talking and then people go off into breakout rooms and small groups to talk about what they learned. And then there's plenty of time for questions. There's lots and lots of discussion. And people have said to me, you know, that they've been maybe living on their own or not meeting any new people or working from home the whole time. This has been a great way to actually meet people who like flowers, who like talking about flowers and like, you know, and in the small breakout rooms, which I'm not in, um, people get a chance to just talk, you know, one to one or one to two. And that's nice. It's a nice way to, um, you know, socialize, I suppose, in a time when it's very hard to find any social outlets. Um, and I suppose I, I let send them off in the breakout rooms and I close the breakout rooms. And I know if things are going well, that they don't come back to the very last minute. And generally, 
in the courses, people don't come back to the last minute. So they're, they're having a good time, they're having good chats. Um, they can talk about anything they want to really, but it's nice for people to get out, you know, to be able to, to meet people who like flowers and, you know, have the share of passion. Um, I, you know, I talk a lot about the no dig. That's been a very popular part. People really want to hear, you know, here's a very easy way to, you know, to, be, to build beds, to build fertility and to grow your flowers. That doesn't require you to, to break your back and it's good for the environment. So that's been a, that's been a really a fun part of it. People are just kind of amazed they can do it so easily. And the biodiversity is a big part. People want, you know, they, 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 they want to support nature. Um, and they want to know how. And so that's been a big part. And a lot of times the, the thing like, like your arc, the thing is to do nothing and to get permission to do nothing. And, you know, maybe just put up, um, you know, a managed for that biodiversity sign yeah, is oftentimes absolutely. enough. You know, you leave your lawn on mode, looks kind of messy. We put up your sign saying this is on purpose. Then yeah. you've obviously, you know, you're, you're ahead of the game. Um, so yeah, there's, there's still a few places left. The course starts next Tuesday. Um, so I have a few places left. And so my, my website's bigsideflowers.ie and you can certainly find me there and book a place if, if people are interested. Yeah, or, if you can ask, you can ask yeah. me questions, I'm I'm on all the different social medias. I'm very easy to find. Cause if that, again, because uh, you know your stuff now, I, I'm gonna do it myself because I always Great. believe I'm always doing like I do gardening courses. There could be ones in Australia and America. I'm doing one actually just finished off one in in Australia there at the moment and it was quite intensive. So I'm always putting it into it because you know, I, I put it into like it's an investment into your hobby. Like if you were out playing, you know, if you're out cycling, you'd be paying thousands for a bike and well I do that anyway, but I <laughs> you're buying clothes, you're buying helmets, you know. So with gardening, yeah. I think you have to be learning a bit as well, you know, and Getting and I think I, I was on a course recently and they've done that and um, breakout rooms. And I think it's brilliant because when you're in, say, you know, there are 10 or 12 people in the Zoom call, it's very hard to put up your hand and say, hey, I, I'd like to know. But then when you're broken into four or five in a group, you can kind of, oh, yeah, what did you think of that? And I didn't like to ask that. And, and I, I think it, it's, it's, as you say, I hit the nail on the head there. You know, you get to meet people and you get to meet friends and, um, you know, you have, you know, and people of the same interest, which is, is a great thing that you can keep in contact then. Yeah. So the other thing that I've done as part of the course is I've created um, a Slack group. So there's an online community that people can join because people always want to ask questions. And it's nice if they can ask questions in a place where other people can see the answers and you build a community of practice that way. So, you know, I've kind of been thinking about this in the long term and it'd be great to build a community of practice of people who are interested, but not everybody wants to be on Facebook. So, I've done it outside of Facebook so that they, they can join without having to be bombarded by, you know, other Facebook things. So that's that's definitely part of, of you know, my, my vision for how this would go is that people, you know, would come and be part of the community and share the knowledge and share share their successes and share their excitement. And also one person had just posted that, you know, the winds came and blew over her little greenhouse. So she was very disappointed, but we were all able to say, you know, it'll be okay, you know, pick up and start again and we can give you some plants if you need some. So, yeah. Yeah, because that again, I was I was just saying to you, I was giving a presentation last night on the benefits of gardening and gardening as such, and um, to the huge number of people on it. But there was two women, and we had questions and answer after. And I, of course, unlucky enough, I got bombarded with questions. Those people on it from America, and I was boom boom. I saw, but anyway, the big thing, like two ladies from Ireland, were asking. One of them was. She bought house plants and she just gets frustrated. They all keep dying on her. What can I do? You know, and it's the simplest thing. I said, did you ever like ask them, you know, what the plant was for or do a little mini course on mind and a plant? And then another lady had a garden out the back, tried it for two years, stuff wouldn't grow. She put in flowers. Again, I was into, look, it's, it's not just, you know, you think you can go out, stick stuff in the ground. You have to learn and you have to do a little course on it because it's a new skill you're learning. You know, and to go and find, you know, a, a little course, even at some something, because I know you go on YouTube and you can find all these videos, but it's not structured. Yeah. You know, and people like structure. I love structure. So I love to be able to say, yeah, this is where you start and this is where we're finished. You're not going to one video and then the next video and then you're interrupted with ads and that. And that's why I like doing courses and it's done and dusted. That's what I believe anyways. So move on to the next then. Um, Oh yeah, so this is just a quick slide. I, I was just actually, I would said that I'd put it in. It just, I was giving it again to talk last night and it was all about soil, a bit about soil nutrition and that. And you can actually see the difference in soil quality. And I think that brings it back to the no dig as well and the different ways of treating and get more organic matter into the soil and reducing down the chemicals. Because 
a lot of what's happening here, you see all the nutrients that was in the soil and now soil is very much depleted, you know, and bringing back up. And I suppose that's why I have a passion of what we do because all our products we have, they're organic and they're natural and it's all about treating the soil, the plant all together, like, and it's not just robbing from one to take to the other of what's going on in the, a lot of the industries. So we have a special offer on tonight. This is what we have. We have our 10 kg of granular seaweed. Absolutely super product. It's organic. And I think you that yourself there, Anna, don't you? Yeah. So, I mean, when I'm teaching my courses, I like to say to people, you know, if you're buying the, you know, the chemical fertilizers, it's like giving your plants Coke or caffeine, you know, sure. they'll be grand for a bit and then they'll kind of fall over and be, be worn out. So, you know, I, I would suggest that seaweed is a very good way to, to give them like milk and porridge for the plants that, you know, it, it's got a lasting effect. It improves the soil quality and also those chemical fertilizers kill all the microbiome. They, they kill the things below the surface. So not, not just are the minerals lacking, but, you know, the creatures that actually help you, all your gardening friends that you can't see, your invisible gardening friends um, are much better fed by a feed of seaweed than they are mm -hmm. killed by, by the chemical fertilizers. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would, th this is something I've been using for, you know, for many years, actually, yeah. I've been, I've been yeah. buying this. And now that I'm teaching it, I would be encouraging people to do similar and you know it's very handy that that uh, granular seaweed just you just sprinkle it around you just it's very clean you're not messing with anything you know it's, not, it's a lot of the things that you do for fertilizer are quite smelly like your you know your comfrey teas yeah, and stuff. Absolutely. So it's, yeah. it's not smelly um it's not going to hurt anything and it certainly improves the health of your plants in in a kind of a much more long lasting way you know it, it's not like the coke or, or the caffeine it's definitely like having, having a good feed of porridge a nice organic porridge yeah, from the yeah. vegan oats um would be what, what your seaweed is like for the plants yeah absolutely and then we have the did actually and then we have there to actually a, a, a mushroom pellet there again and that's all it, it's a brilliant organic matter in that as well so the worms love that and they get the toy going obviously with the liquid tea and then we have the root booster as well absolutely that we're getting the feedback we're getting on that at the moment it's just for transplanting it's just amazing because again if the biomass of the roots really improve and even if what people are doing is even when they're digging the hole they're spraying it with the root booster first and then they're putting in the plant and really really the difference it's making to, to the plant is it, it, brilliant so it gets the secondary roots going on the plants as well so it's, it's it's an important little product there so that's an offer at the moment there for so who on the website there so this is i was fascinated by this picture yeah, this this is basically a little caterpillar inside a, a corn. It's a purple cornflower. So, I suppose this represents what I'm doing in my garden. I'm trying to have beauty, but side by side with the nature. So, you know, I was just delighted that this caterpillar had decided to make its its home in my. You know, I I wouldn't be going out. I mean, it's okay if I get a huge amount of caterpillars, I'm not that happy. And certainly, you know, I would probably be doing a little bit of spraying with, um, with with a. Uh, dishwasher liquid to get rid of green fly but as well as that I, I recognize that if you don't feed you know if you want predators to be in place like if you want the ladybirds to be in place to kill the green fly you have to have some green fly if all the green flies are dead ladybirds have nothing to eat so they're going to die themselves so there's a balance you have to reach and i'm happy for you know to take my time to wait for that balance to come and not to be yeah. taking action with trying to kill the pests and in this, this photograph to me it just shows like there's a very happy caterpillar. I mean, a bird may eat it at some point in the future, but the bird won't die because the caterpillar wasn't poisoned. Um, so, you know, we're all living in, in as much harmony as we can because we have to. Otherwise, you know, we're, we're not going to survive. Um, Mother Nature will survive, but we won't survive if, 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 we, if we keep trying to kill and have control over. Um, because, you know, we've seen with COVID, Mother Nature is very, very powerful. And, you know, yeah. she, she, could, she could total us very quickly. Oh, I, I agree with you 100 percent and even you know people i hear them putting up pots you know putting on this garlic and um yeah chili sprays and all that but again there yes they might be getting rid of your green fly but they're also they're you know your you know other you could be killing off other wildlife that's on the plant as well you know your hoverfly won't come in your ladybird you could be killing off your ladybird they may not like it so you know i think if you can i know the, the green fly kind of just an awful pest but when you get an infestation again look at it, it does come back down to the soil and the nutrition of the plant because they do and i've said this every week it's the unhealthy plant it's nearly like the, that's the weaker, right. weaker one they'll always attack the weaker and that's why you need either to pull it and get rid of it or start feeding it or start looking at why why is the case so like i'm not don't beat yourself up about it i had a big issue with it in my tunnel a few years ago and i did find out i got the soil tested and it did the soil was deficient and i fixed that problem and i'd never i never looked back to be honest with you so it is a brilliant 
I'm going to um, actually Amber was asking a question. I know um, Enda Montgomery has answered it, but um, she had two pots today, and I checked them and found Vine, um, Weevil, and one eggs. I've thrown out the soil. Is there anything else I should do? I suppose you checked all the other pots as well. Um, yeah. You know, that's that's something that spreads. I've never had it, thank God. Um, but and I don't actually know what the solution is for it, but it is, it's a very serious one. So I probably would check everything else to make sure that there's, and definitely you want to get rid of the soil. Um, you don't want to put that um, into your compost bin or anything, so. Yeah, I think Andrew Montgomery was actually saying, he was saying, yeah, he was saying actually trog the soil, exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's a solution, solution out there as well. So um, throw that in there. For anyone that might have similar situations there, that's probably a good, um, Good way because they, they can be very you know and they, that's the thing you have to be watching and you have to be watching out for different pests and um these that might be there so so it, it's a definitely a good one so yeah so that's all there i don't see any other questions there tonight so so what tips would you be giving then for people to get out in the garden at the moment anna um well i suppose the the if, if you're going to direct sow in the ground, which is a fine thing to do, wait until the weed seeds start to come up because the weed seeds will tell you when the weeds start to come up, that means the soil is warm enough to start germinating seeds. So until there's weeds coming up like crazy, like annual weeds, like chickweed, stuff like that, there's no point going near the soil because it's not, even though it's warm in the air, the soil isn't warm enough yet. Um, if you do want to plant things in pots, that's a good way to go and get them to be a decent size because the slugs do love to eat some of those little like things like sweet pea the slugs love to eat them mm -hmm. so bring your sweet pea along in pots before you put it into the ground so it's a good height so the slugs can't eat the whole thing keep it up on a shelf if you can somewhere sheltered um because the slugs will get it if it's in pots even still but if you can get it up a little bit high it's a bit harder for them to get at it uh you know that's really it like i think just keep trying i mean if 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 you plant seeds not all the seeds are going to grow and that's normal and that's okay if you get 50 percent go and you're doing well um but always sort of you know accept there's going to be losses and you know basically plant with that in mind and then if the slugs get a few it's not the end of the world because you've got some spare ones left behind so give yourself some slack i suppose would, would be part of it and you were saying that as well don't be yourself up about things you know i'm still learning i've been doing this for many many decades and i'm still learning loads of new things and i make mistakes every year and i get things wrong but that's part of the charm for me is that I'll never be an expert on this because it's just, there's so much to learn. Um, so just, you know, take, take take a learning attitude to it and just, you know, look at it as a scientist and see what you learn by what you do um, mm. and try again, keep trying. Well, keep tr absolutely, because every day at the school day when you go down to the garden, you know, and, and it is, it just, because you're just a minefield because they just say one year things really, really just um, go really well and the next year, to yeah. just drop down and you just and you just have that and it's just nature and I, I think 100 percent and i think if you just plant it and again i often people plant what you like i know at the moment like um right there's a family meeting up over planting because I, I grew too much of the wrong stuff and uh, my two ladies don't like them so i was given more tomatoes and more broccoli cauliflower and peas we don't want anything Fair else and, uh, so i'd find there yeah, will because um, we, we do freeze planch and freeze everything. So like we just have um, an abundance of actually sprouting broccoli coming up at the minute. Lovely. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, and then veg-wise as well, I know you do a certain amount of vegetables as well, do you? Yeah, so I do a few tomatoes in the tunnel. I grow a few spuds. Um, probably, I'll probably do more vegetables this year because I've got more space to grow them in. I, I, I would be inclined to grow things that would be a bit unusual. You know, so I was been, I've been growing artichokes or cardoons for some time because there's something I love to eat when I was living in California and they were hard to find um, in Ireland. And certainly if you went to Fallon Burns and Boston, they'd cost you like five or six euro a piece. So and they're perennial. So I suppose it's, it's nice to be able to grow things that are perennial because they keep yeah. coming back year after year. So um, something like that, I think, is worth growing. You know, I think like more than your family, grow the things you eat. Um, you know, and things like onions, they're easy enough to buy, but lettuce, like fresh lettuce is kind of hard to get. So those are the kind of things that I would focus on growing, things that would be harder to get. Though mind you now with having the market in town, it's a really improved the quality of the veg people can actually get access to. But if you're not in Mullingar, Ballymahan, then grow your own lettuce. Um, you know, and, and tomatoes are a great thing if you have some shelter to grow there. Courgettes, pumpkins, that kind of thing. You know, they, for, for one seed, they give a huge amount of produce. Um, and they're just really fun to watch them because they grow so fast. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, spuds are you know spuds are just so delicious when you can bring them out of the ground and they they work really well with no dig actually. I grew a lot of spuds last year with no dig and they came out right. really clean. I I hardly even needed to earth them up. There was nothing. There was almost no work and they had a great crop and they were just amazingly delicious as well. So um, yeah. yeah. And did you um, when you say no dig, did you dig a hole and just put them into the, into the hole or did you just cover I, them with? I I put down cardboard and I had a load of mushroom compost. I put down the right. cardboard. I put some spuds on top of the card, but I put some mushroom compost on top of them, not a huge amount, and I walked away. Yeah. And I should have earthed them up a little bit with maybe with some grass clippings. I didn't even do that. So I had a few that got a bit discolored um, because they were exposed to the light. But other than that, I did nothing. Mm. And yeah. they, they grew. Yeah, you know? no, but they, but they are quite easy anyways, you know. It's just, well, they're, 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 they're a bit of minding in them, but they're... they're... Yeah, but, you know, I mean, I, I grew the Sarpo varieties. They were, they were somewhat blight resistant. And... But like, you know, people do all this double digging for spuds. And, you know, if you want to exercise yourself, great. If you want to get a workout, fantastic. But, it, you know, it isn't actually necessary to get the good spuds. No, definitely not. But I think I look at it and it's been spoken about so many times there. You know, it's like I call out to my father the other week now and he's in his 80, 85 now, you know, and he was out tilling the garden. And I was just having a good joke. And I said, God, if some of the group seen you tilling your garden now, to be uproar, you know, it's all no big. I'm like, what the bloody hell am I meant to do? He says, and I said, look at just keep telling it. You've been telling it yeah. now for yeah. again, 70 years. Why stop now? And, and you No, know, indeed. Yeah. Like we, we grew up with the best of food. And that's what, where I got my passion from growing was from my father and seeing him, you know, growing the peas and the broccoli and the cat. You know, we we had food all year round. That we very much ate in the season of what was there, you know. And Tony, now looking back, so I, that's exactly what we were doing. Like, you know. Yeah, that's, that's all you could do, right? That's all we could do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you had the big tap for the spuds and you had the onions hung on the on the ceiling in the buyer and you had onions all year round from what you planted. Yeah. And if you planted badly, that was it. You were going to be hungry. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because even yeah. we used to pit the pit the carrots and pit the potatoes and pit everything. We put the straw across and then we'd pit them up with the the soil. And I used to hate going up pit, getting them because no the way be, years ago be sent up to get the potatoes and be fresh. Buried in or something. So, but it's it, it's a brilliant thing. But like, I wouldn't I wouldn't grow that much for ourselves. I just grow a few early early potatoes, and that kind of does me for um, my potatoes for the year. I don't um, try and go back. But I, we're going to leave it off there for tonight. And um, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. And I hope you've had an absolutely brilliant St. Patrick's night. We will be back next week around the same time. All going well and wedding season. Oh, look at the weather is up for the next couple of days. I think everyone is um and actually someone there. Um a quick question there before we go off like this. I have a north facing garden, didn't prep it with enough grit sand twenty years ago. I have an office very wet. Having said that, full of plants, love it, improve the soil. All right, so I should not that. Uh, perfect, brilliant stuff, Marie. That's um, great to see the comments coming in. So as I was saying, look at thank you so much. I was just afraid I was going to miss that answering someone's question there. So look at thank you so much for tuning in again. Look at it's you guys that make it. You know we were here to um, help you and hope to give you some tips and you know advice on you know gardening a bit better, you know and keep the whole thing going. So any last words then, Anna, from yourself? No, I'm get out there, get dirty, get growing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's great for your mental health. Yeah, hundred percent. So, look again. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and stay safe. And we'll talk to you next week. Thank you very much. Bye. And bro.